Hey everyone, Steve here. And today I am gonna talk about the surface smoothness of interior edges on a single surface function here in V5. So within V5, we have a couple of operators in generative shape design. It's the blend tool as well as the multi-section surface tool. And I want to do a comparison to see what they do with interior edges on a sweep. So I have, let's take a look at the screen. Katia V5-6 release 2024. So it is a late, late version of Katia. And I don't know what's changed between this version and any prior versions, if there have been any changes. I know there were some that took place several years ago when they changed it from, what is it, lofted surface, or you know, I, think, I think that's what it was called, a lofted surface, to multi-section surface as well. So I don't know if it was just a simple name change or if there was an algo change or what's changed in the interim, but we're talking about what's going on now in V5. Now, I, I'm going to take it as axiomatic that this is also true in 3D experience because the algorithm is basically the same. It's just what it looks like. So take it again as axiomatic that what happens here will also occur in 3D experience. Now, I'm just going to start out with the raw sections and I'm going to go ahead and put in a multi-section surface just from section to section. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put in a blend as well, section to section. Now, when I do this, note, let me change the color of my multi-section surface. We'll go to green, and then we will go to changing the color of the blend, and we'll make that blue. So you can see that they're nearly identical. There are some slight changes. Uh, I know that there is a very different way, the underpinnings of the way these functions operate, the way blend operates versus multi-section surface. They do two very different things. It'll be far more apparent once I impose tangencies on either side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, let me hide this fella, apply my connect checker to the multi-section surface. And if we take a look at G1, see what's going on. Notice G1 looks good all the way across. So even if I do the automatic range or anything like that, I notice I have internal edges turned on, that's important. So it's perfect going all the way across. If I go to G2 and run the same thing, you'll note that there is a break over here. And that's logical because these are just simply tangent fillets to lines, okay? So this is what I expect to see. Hit okay, and cancel. Whoops, I accidentally applied it twice. Let me hide that. Now I'll show my blend. Let me double click on this second analysis and let me put it on that blend. So notice it is very, very similar. And again, if I double click on my connect checker over here, I have again, similar results between analysis one and analysis two, okay? So there's no big, gigantic, appreciable difference between blend and multi-section surface in this condition. And we do have smoothness across those boundaries. So what I've done is I've set up my extrudes on either side. I'm gonna go ahead and into my blend because that's what's shown. So there's my first curve, which will be doing the first support and then second support. I'm going to leave it at both extremities and select OK. Now with that, let me hide this. Let me show that. See what we have. So for my connect checker, G1, perfectly smooth, going all the way across. I don't see any errors or issues. And with 
G2, I get kind of what I expect to see. Okay, let me min max that. Where, once again, because this is just tangent, I'm sure if I had curvature going across here, set this up a little differently, it would look different, right? Because this is a hard tangent. This is what is necessary to get that. Now, as it comes into the circle, you'll note over here, it starts to wash out, which I expect to see. So if I show my mins, right, all that is zero down there because this is a circle. It's all curvature. It works. And most importantly, yes, tangent works wonderfully for surface smoothness there. Let me hide that. Let me hide this. Let me show my multi-section surface. With my multi-section surface, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to add in the adjacent and then show my connect checker. Double click on my connect checker and verify. Okay, G2 is expected what I see. G1, everything looks good. Okay, I really don't see anything that would be any sort of a pause for concern on this. So I'm going to say it is good going across boundaries. It doesn't look like there are any issues whatsoever. All right. Now, one more thing that I do want to check, verify, is if I draw in for the multi-section surface, the end curves, right, having guides, I'm going to double click on that and then add in the guides to see what happens because, you know, you don't know until you know, right? And that looks okay for my multi-section surface. Yeah, I don't see any issues whatsoever on my multi. So all of that is good. No appreciable or concerning issues. Now, just to kind of show that there is a difference between what the two elements are doing. Okay, there's my blend versus my multi-section surface. Now, if I go to my multi-section surface and I remove these, just to make sure everything is consistent, right? There's no additional inputs. They're both built the same now, the multi-section surface and the blend. And you'll note that, yes, they are doing something different with the shape. You can see here, those edges are different and the zebra striping, right? one surface acceleration and so on. So let me go check out the blend to make certain that our tensions, yep, one and one, tangency, both extremities, everything checks out there. So we quite rightly, the blend and multi-section surface are identical as far as inputs, what went into building them, but yes, they do make different surfaces. Now, uh, last check, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna turn on my control points for these guys. Let's see here, let me double click on my height show. And if we take a look at multi-section surface, yep, you can see that there is a profound difference between that and that, what the blend and the multi-section surface are doing. And that's why there is a different result as far as the end surface, but none of that mattered because they both ended up with a smooth interior transition, even with the multi-section surface having guides added in at the ends. Now, I didn't check interior guides or anything like that. I'm going to assume that it's going to be smooth across interior guides. I think that's always been the case for whatever CAD system. I think it was just when the ends are free like this, the interior points are free, and how they loft to the other side. Uh, was really more of the issue, not necessarily anything that's running across an interior guide string. So if you want to see that, 
I can do that. I can perform those checks as well. I have no problems doing that. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you do me a favor, if you like what you saw and you want to see more of it, again, let me know in the comments. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed to the channel. It really helps me out. And like the video and share with somebody you think may enjoy the content. Again, thank you.